بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the entirely merciful the especially merciful اقرا باسم ربك الذي خلق Recite in the name of your Lord who created خلق الانسان من علق Created man from a clinging substance اقرأ وربك الأكرم Recite and your Lord is the most generous الذي علم بالقلم Who taught by the pen علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Taught man that which he knew not Possibly very few among us listening here, they know the language. 
In spite of even knowing the language, you need to learn to understand the Al-Quran al kareem Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the one knows him is Mufassir al-Quran, Tarjuman al-Quran. You know what he said about the Tafsir of Quran or about the Quran. He said in the Quran there are certain things which ya'lamuhu ammatul Arab, meaning that anybody who knows the Arabic language, they know these meanings of the Quran. The, not everything, but some of those things. And then there are other things from the Quran which is only known to the scholars. La ya'lamuhu illa al-ulama. The scholars will only know. And those kind of things which the only scholars will know, they can't know it just like that. They have to go and read, they have to study and learn. And then, ilmu la ya'lamuhu illa Allah. And certain amount of knowledge, nobody knows but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we are to learn what normal Arabs may know and those which the scholars, they study to know. <coughs> Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, yes, Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, a mas'ala came to me related to some issue naturally in the tafsir of the Qur'an. He said, I went, sometimes if it happens, I may go up to 100 tafsir, 100 books of tafsir. How many? 100 books in tafsir looking for what? Just one particular mas'ala, one particular issue. And we know who Ibn Taymiyyah is. He is Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah, a great scholar. The books which he has written, sometimes, the, such as Al-Hamawiyya uh, al Al-Kubra, uh, uh, a book which he wrote <coughs> related to some issues of Tawheed. In that book, somebody spoke to him about some issue. As far as I recall, he started to write either between Asr to Maghrib or between Zohar to Asr. I think it was from Asr to Maghrib. He sat down, he had to write and he wrote the entire book while sitting there. He wrote it down. And then after that, when we studied, it took us one year to study that book and we still, we don't know what is in it. I mean, perfectly we don't know, but we just tried to learn. There are scholars who did verification of that simple book. These are the kind of scholars I'm saying. He went to 100 books of tafsir just in order to get to this, uh, to the answer of this masala. And then after that, what he said, Thumma yulhiman yallahu bimasha. Then Allah may put in my mind the meanings which I can't find even in those books and then I would write. Subhanallah. So don't feel shy. That if you are listening here to tafsir, you may say, I have got the books, I have got this, I will learn. No, it doesn't happen that way always. <coughs> we are only dependent on books after you take it from the sheikh. And that is why the scholars who try to become scholars, not the scholars who are students, who are dependent on computers and the Googles and, and this, that is dangerous. That is dangerous. You have to have the guidance first from the Mashai. Remember, you will go through hardships in coming through this tafsir, but we are, I won't go in each and every detail, but whatever is more important, definitely I will try to mention. <coughs> Especially when it comes to an issue of aqidah, related issues of fiqh, which is important, naturally explanation of the meaning of the words which will be in front of us. Imam Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah Imam al-Sunnah, al-Hafidh al-Kabir, al-Imam al-Kabir, Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, the one who has compiled the book known as Musnad al-Imam Ahmad, in which he has compiled about 30,000 hadith. And you know how much he had memorized? Three million. Alf, 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 alf. Thousand, 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 thousand. There was no million at the time. A thousand, thousand is a million. Right? So he had million, three million hadith in athar wa aqwal al-sahaba wa tabi'een. Three million! If I tell you to memorize three ayah, you would struggle till next week 
And when I, I feel shy even to request because you will not come to the masjid thinking that Sheikh will listen to me tomorrow, I won't be able to answer. Yeah, this is me, this is us. But here, yeah, this is the Imam Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah. You know, he had 3 million athar and hadith, and he had 30,000 hadith which he had compiled from that. And now, this tall, skinny fella, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan Wasi'a. Do you think Allah blessed him in a way that he was sitting in a chair in a throne with a golden um, uh, taj on top of him, a golden throne, and, and everything um, uh, was it that way? Or what? In spite of all these which Allah had given him, the intihar would come. All the ambiyas which I have mentioned many times, first, Al-Intihan wal ibtila thumma tamkinan. That's why no wonder Imam Shafi rahimahullah when he was asked, Ayyuhuma abdal al tamkin am al ibtila, which is better to have the status and position and be stable or ibtila? Imam Shafi he said it very clearly, the uh, stability, the, it will not al, al ibtila. Without ibtila, there is no tamkin. You have to go through hardships. All the prophets they had to go through that. And now he Rahimahullah in the Masala of Khalq al-Qur'an that whether either the Qur'an is created or not and I said it many times and I say it again here Al-Qur'an sifatun min sifat Allahi ghayru makhluq It is an attribute of Allah, kalam of Allah and speech of Allah and it is not created For that he was whipped within six months 1600 times The doctor would come cure him and even parts of the skin would be removed after applying oil and then again the beat him. This is not Qurafat, this is not tale, this is what he went through, it's all recorded and registered. Just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know he said when there were people were asking him, how come you had so much of suffer? How 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 come that you had so much of suffer when you were doing all these things and you're going through these hardships? He said you know, when they put me to prison. In the prison, who you will find? Accountants, engineers, doctors, noble people? No. You, uh, you find those who have fornicated, committed adultery, been drinking, been stealing, thieves, the lowest of the, um, uh, of the ummah would be there, isn't it? And now he said that one of the men, he said to me, Bima Sajunuk, you are Imam Ahmad, Anta Imam Ahmad, are you Imam Ahmad? Yes, I'm Imam Ahmad. Why did they put you to prison? So he explained to him what? He said, you have suffered, you know, because I have been whipped seven times, seven different individual times. Still, I keep on coming back because I, because he drinks. So he's drink, drinking liquor and you know that it, the person, if caught being drinking, has to be whipped 40 times. So he said, I came back seven times, I've been whipped, and still I go and drink and come back. So if I have suffer for something which I'm doing for the shaitan, then why don't you have suffer for the sunnah? He said, Imam Ahmad, when he told me this, I got this iman encouragement. Why not fear Allah? And he said, there was another baby one time, they, were take, uh, putting, uh, they put me on a mule, or on a donkey, and they were taking me somewhere. So this Bedouin, uh, he met me in the road and he said, where are they taking you? He said, Allahu Alam, I don't know where they are taking me, all handcuffed and chained, you know, <coughs> disgraced. Then Bedouin, he said, Ispir, alayka bis sabr, have sabr. Because it is a siham, only one arrow will come from here and go out from there, so the arrow will come from here and from there you will go to Jannah. That's all. So these are the way these people were, that's why now they are so high up, isn't it? And that's why, brothers, for us to continue in this tafsir, which I have the intention, even if I am alone here, I will do it. And for you people to follow it up continuously while you are here is not easy. But if you have that intention, Allah is going to give each one of you barakah and life to be here and be able to hear with us. Jazakallah khairan. Now we start with the first surah known as <coughs> Surah Al-Fatiha. Whenever anybody who becomes a Muslim, the very first part of the Quran we teach is Surah Al-Fatiha. And this is the very first chapter of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, which has been revealed on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah Al-Mukarramah. Some of these scholars, they say, no, it was revealed in Medina. 
Some they say possibly once rebuilt in Mecca and once in Medina. The important part is that the most authentic is that it did reveal in Mecca. Did it come again? That's another issue. Now, the important thing is that it was revealed in Mecca on him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is basically of seven verses. Now, there are many virtues related to this beautiful surah as the entire Quran is beautiful. The reason we teach everybody, and even our young children, we try to teach them Al-Fatiha before any other surah is because we need it every day in our life to recite when we pray five times a day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a Sahih hadith narrated by Abu Huraira, Qala, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, Umm al-Qur'an, wa Umm al-Kitab, wa sab'u al-Mathani, wa al-Qur'an al-Azim. And this hadith is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, and in Al-Tirmadi, and in many other places. The meaning of which is, that Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen referring to the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha which means all praise due to Allah the Lord of all the mankind all, all and all in existence of course it is this Surah is Umm Al-Quran mother of the entire Quran also Umm Al-Kitab the mother of the first whatever you say of the Kitab which is also the book and also you may say in Allah Al-Mahfur and As-Sab' Al-Mathani and it is among the seven verses repeated continuously in Wal Quran Al Azim, and it is also among the glorious Quran. So, this is uh, Surah Al Fatiha which we are talking about. There are many names given to this Surah. Enough it is that there are about 11 names, some of them are very authentic. It shows the importance of the surah. Normally, a person of importance or of his status can be given many good names. So, among the names of Surah Al Fatiha, it is Umm Al Quran, Umm Al Kitab, Al Thabar Masani, Al Quran Al Azim, and also Al Shifa, and Al Hamd, and Al Salah, and Al Ruqya, and Al Waqia, and Al Salah, and Al Kans. So, these are among the names. Some of them, as I said, are authentically recorded. Now, there are about 25 words in the surah, including about, that's about 113 alphabets. These things are not so important, but it is just here for information, so I thought to mention it to you, brothers and sisters. Now, as I said in the beginning, there are very many, many virtues related to this beautiful surah. Such as Abu Sa'id ibn Ya'l al Ma'la, he is saying, رضي الله عنه قال كنت أصلي فدعاني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فلم أجبه حتى صليت فأتيت. In this hadith is said that Abu Sa'id ibn Al Ma'la is saying that one day I was praying. While I was praying, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دعاني. He called me. يا أبا سعيد. And I kept on praying. I did not answer him. I kept on praying till I finished my salah. And then I came to him. Why did you come when I call you? Why did you answer me back? You know the reason I did not answer you because I was praying. So Rasulullah sallallahu he said, Qala, alam yaqulullahu ta'ala, Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu stajibu lillahi wa li rasuli idha da'akum lima yuhiyikum. Did you hear what Allah has said? All those who believe, answer the call of Allah by following his commands, aid of Rasulullah by answering him if he is calling you. إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحِيكُمْ If he is calling you to something which is of good to you or which is going to give you life. So it was a normal standard part of the teaching among the Sahabas that if he وسلم, would call anybody, they would have to cut their salah and go and answer the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naturally, the Sahabi, he did not know and now he is being told. 
ثم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سيد لو علي منك عالم سورة في القرآن قبل أن تخرج من المسجد I'm going to teach you the most greatest surah in the Quran before you go out of this masjid. قال, he said that is Abu Sa'id. فأخذ بيدي. So Rasulullah took it. Help me in my in his hand. فلما أراد أن يخرج من المسجد قلت When he saw Allah said I wanted to go out of the masjid be it to one of his houses or to somewhere else. Then Abu Sa'id, well, of course he's waiting for that time. Time to come when he will say it to him. Now, remember the other, the educate. He did not say to Rasulullah, kept to say, Rasulullah, what is it? Please tell me, please. No, he's waiting because Rasulullah said, when I go out of the masjid, at that time I'm going to tell you. So he's waiting for that time to come. Now, when he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is coming, he politely reminds him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, inna ka kulta la wa'alli manna ka adama suratin fil Quran. You promised me to tell me the greatest surah in the Quran, the chapter. قال نعم yes الحمد لله رب العالمين ذات سورة الفاتحة in which we are هي السبع مثاني والقرآن العظيم الذي أتيت سبحان الله it is among the seven most repeated verses and it is among the greatest greatest of the Quran and this is the greatest surah is رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said and this is narrated by الإمام البخاري and many others in their Sunan books so from this we learn that this is Alhamdulillah a surah which we all have know and we have memorized it and we can recite it without looking anywhere and this is the greatest surah greatest surah in Al-Quran al karim so now if somebody is asking you do you know which is the greatest surah in the Quran you will say yes I know and I have memorized it and that is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Ila Akhiri also رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسير بعد في حديث والذي نفسي بيده ما أنزل الله في التوراة ولا في الإنجيل ولا في الزبور ولا في الفرقان مثلها إنها السبع المثاني. Part of a long hadith. The important part from that the other one is similar to what we have already taken that in whose hand is my soul. That is Allah. Meaning that I swear by Allah. Allah has not revealed. In Torah, the Old Testament, in Injil, the Gospel, in Azabur, the Psalms of David, Wala Fil Furqan, the Furqan, which was revealed on Nuh al Islam, one of the one of the things, the other things are there are others, Jazakallah Khanan. One is that it was Al Furqan was revealed on Nuh alayhi salatu was salam and the other there are few other verses, I don't recall it, one of them is Nuh Allah Alam. That it is among the seven of the most repeated verses, meaning that this is Surah Al Fatiha. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us, and never ever it has been revealed on anybody else. Now, this is an authentic hadith, and this shows some of the virtues of Surah Al Fatiha. Among the virtues. Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, he says that we were traveling, going somewhere. While we were traveling, Faja'a jariyatun, a female servant, she came to us. Faqal, she said, Inna Sayyidul Hay, Salim. Now the word Salim means somebody who is healthy or who is safe and protected. But here, the word Tafa'ulan, out the good omen has been used in instead of Saqim. Inna, in fact it should be Inna Sayyid al marid or Saqim or Musa. Right? But she said Salim. This is like a Tafa'ul that may Allah make him Salim. Right? Inna Sayyid al Salim. That the leader of the tribe, and he is sick. So, wa inna nafaran ghayyab, wa inna nafaran ghayyab, meaning that my, my people, they are not here, so we don't know what to do. Fahal bin Kumrawi, is there anybody among you who can do Rukia? You know, uh, curing people by reciting Quran or a hadith, the dua. So, one of the Sahabas, Faqama ma'aha rajulun ma kunna na'abah bihi. Meaning, a man from among them, he stood up to go and he said, We did not, 
we did not even know that he is among the experts of Rukia. We never even bothered about his Rukia because he's just one of those. In one of the hadiths, it is mentioned that that is Abu Sa'id al Khudri himself. So he said he went there and he recited. And Allah gave this man Shifa. You know, a scorpion had stinged him. So the poison came out by the Rukia of Surah Al Fatiha. And this is why this surah is known for Rukia, for the purpose of Rukia. So he said, when I did this, he got cured. He got so. Imagine how important it was because if they do not do a discopian, the poison, it can kill a person. The result of that is, he said, he was given 30 sheep. 30 sheep. Now in New Zealand, that means about $4,500. At 150, that's the standard, it may be even more. That's a lot of money, you can buy a car with that. Isn't it? SubhanAllah. He was given 30 sheep. And then, he said, I came with that. Now the rest of the companions, what happened? Of course, he must have been telling, I did this and this is happening. So, don't do anything, all you horses. We are not going to do anything. We are going to take this entire group of sheep to Rasulullah and let us see what he says. They were in doubt whether it is allowed or not. So they <coughs> went and told Rasulullah Then he said, Wallah you agree he anna haruqiyah. Qasimu wadrubu li misahmin. How come he knew that that is a ruqiyah? Meaning indeed, indeed it is a ruqiyah. What he did was perfect. And also give me a share. Share it among yourselves and give me one share of it. He Rasulullah didn't need that share. But it was just to prove that what he, they did was right. So this is part of what we know and whenever there is somebody sick, we, this is among the very first we recite from the Quran on that sick person. Also, the last of this for the night, hopefully, inshallah, with this you will be going home. Uh, the last of this for the night is narrated by Muslim in Sahihihi wa Nasa'i and others. Ibn Abbas says, Baina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa indahu Jibreel. One day Rasulullah was, you know, somewhere and Jibreel was also with him, alayhi salam. Il sami'a naqeedan fawqahu. He heard some kind of sound up. Farafa'a Jibreel basarahu ila sama. So Jibreel, he was looking up to the heavens like this, right? And Rasulullah is with him, so he can see what is happening. Faqala hadha baabun kat futiha min as-sama. Ma futihatak. This is the sound of the door in the heavens opening, which you just had the sound, Rasulullah. This is the sound of the door in the heavens, which has been never, ever, ever been opened before. It opened just now. Then an angel came out from the door, came down. He came to Rasulullah and he said to Rasulullah, Abshir bi nuraini kad uti dahuma lam yuktiha nabiyun qablak. I'm giving you the glad tidings that you have been provided with two kinds of lights which no other nabi, no other prophet, nobody else before you have been given our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fatihatul kitab wa khawatimu surat al-Baqarah. Surat al-Fatihah in the last two or three verses of surat al-Baqarah. Lan taqra harfan minhuma illa uti dahu. Each and every alphabet which you, which you recite from this, you will be gaining the benefits of it. You will get the benefits of it. So subhanAllah, narrated in Muslim and Asai in other places, Ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we recite it every day in our salah, continuously, non-stop, every day in our life, Surah Al-Fatiha is our companion. Imagine the rewards which you are getting just by reciting it, and imagine if you recite it after you understand the meaning and this kind of virtue, uh, hadiths which are mentioning the virtues of this beautiful surah. I pray to Allah that may Allah uh, give us the benefit of this surah in the entire Quran. May Allah give us the rewards which we deserve and more. May Allah overlook our shortcomings and only give us rewards and forgive our shortcomings and increase the rewards more than what we deserve. And may this become among the reasons through which we are able to pave our way to Jannatil Ala, Jannatil Fidos. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi lakhrati hasana wa qin adab naad. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yisifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. 
Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Jazakum